I'm Harry Hoke. I co-own Hoke Orchard and Gardens with my wife Jackie Hoke. We are in a Crescent, Minnesota. We are in the Driftless region and about oh maybe five miles as the crow flies from the center of the Mississippi River Valley. So we're in a very nice microclimate, good elevation, air drainage, great site for trees and perennials. The main reason we started integrating animals was uh, the concept of completing the nutrient cycling. Years ago, when I read Holistic Agriculture by Savory, it really spelled out the connection of the animals and the manure and the regenerating and the cycling of the nutrients. And a kind of a light bulb went off for me when I read that. And I started thinking about how the whole system works. And we started figuring out different ways to integrate animals. And since then, I've been increasing the animals, uh, trying different species, and rotating them into all of our different types of crops here. And it's an ongoing learning process. But the whole concept would be multi-species rotational grazing in perennial fruits. Our primary crop is apples. And most of the apples are grown on uh, semi-dwarf trees in a fairly tight density. And uh, there's always some amount of, of sunlight getting to the orchard floor, so we do produce quite a bit of, of forage. We try to bring animals in to both fertilize the soil, mow, but also to break pest cycles. But that could be, you know, if you're not thinking ahead and you have a ruminant animal in an orchard a couple of weeks before and leaving large droppings, you think, oh, that's on the ground. It's not going to bother people picking the apples, but if somebody steps in something and then walks up a ladder uh, and then you're putting your hands on the rungs of the ladder, now you've contaminated potentially your hands, your clothes, your picking equipment. So that's something that could happen, but you know, with common sense, you're not going to have your crews uh, in there when that's the case. All the integrated farms like this are, are going to have to have standards for evaluating, assessing their risk, and recording their processes for future inspections. So instead of all the farmers reinventing the wheel and writing up their own standards and their own steps, I think we could work together to come up with a, a boilerplate for your safety plan and maybe some, some base record keeping forms. Now maybe each farm would take that form and then modify it for their species of animals and plants, but it'd be something to start with. Because right now the rules are written very vaguely and a lot of, of uh, responsibility is actually put onto the farmer to develop their own protocols for assessing uh, the danger, assessing the amount of risk. So we're in a situation where we can put together these protocols that are appropriate for us instead of somebody else developing them and then saying here's what you have to do now make your farm fit. A grazing plan for my farm would be very complicated, have very many levels because we'd have multiple species of animals and multiple species of fruit and each one would be different. An example would be the sheep grazing in the apple orchards. Now the sheep are primarily grazers, secondarily browsers, so that means they will eat apple trees, apple shoots, apple blossoms. So for example, we may allow the sheep into the orchard once the ground cover greens up, but then take them out of the orchard before the buds really start to break and much soft green tissue comes out because then the sheep will move from grazing the new grass to trimming all the flower buds and the shoots off of the, the bottoms of the trees. So we could set approximate dates according to when bud break was in the past, but they wouldn't be hard dates and they wouldn't be hard periods of time because depending on the weather, apple trees can go from uh, dormant to a tight, tight flower cluster 
in a few days if it's warm or a few weeks if it's cool. But we could set up a, a series of dates or times that are based on that phenology and then adjusted per each season. Uh, another example would be with the, with the hogs. The hogs do a great job of gleaning fruit. Um, so obviously we'll use this, the uh, hogs in the orchards after harvest. But pre-harvest, um, a few weeks after bloom, the apples go through a natural June drop, we call it. And it extends beyond June, but the, apples shed, the apple trees shed the extra apples. And we also send crews out to thin apples. So all these little green apples are dropping onto the orchard floor. And in an organic situation like us, there's always some infestation, some disease. And we thin that off and it goes onto the orchard floor. Uh, so we can time bringing in the pigs to glean that fruit in the orchards and then move them out after that period of time for shedding apples is over. And then they would come back in post harvest. So those are two examples of two species of animals and two in one species of plants. Uh, but you would do a sampling and assess uh, whether or not there's presence of any, any manure prior, just prior to harvest. So we'd have to develop a, a protocol like that for each crop. And then we would have to go in at a specified time before harvest. Then beyond that, we would have to come up with a system if manure is found, what are the processes then? Is that area flagged? Is that area not harvested? Do you wait and use it for processing um, instead of fresh market, something that would be cooked? But you'd have to have a series of safety measures or, or what would you do in that situation. And what often happens in industry, agricultural industry with large farms is the biggest farms with the most influence pay people to set up the rule systems, the protocols for their farm. And then us smaller integrated farms that work in a completely different system have to try to make our farm fit their rules and it usually ends up in a, in a bit of a mess or a struggle or frustrations for the farmers. So if we can all get together at some times or even a couple of farms talking about what they're putting together, how they're doing the rules, how they're doing their, their uh, assessments and how they're keeping the records, we could possibly come up with something that's, that's standardized and then as more people implement their safety plans, their record keeping, they could follow what others have already put together. So I, I think that would probably be the best way to go. And of course, having that manure strengthens the system, and the stronger the system is, the quicker the manure breaks down. So if there is a pathogen in the manure, that pathogen, which is m most of the time anaerobic, so it can survive in a person's body where there's no oxygen, does not compete in a nice, rich, or you know, aerobic soil with all kinds of aerobic organisms breaking things down. So you have a diverse system, lots of biology. The pathogens don't have a very good chance. And then you add to that, you've got healthy animals that are used to being outside and have a strong immune system. They're not going to be shedding as many pathogens because these pathogens are not in a healthy animal. And a lot of people don't like to admit that, that not all manure is going to kill you. A healthy animal is gonna have manure that's not gonna cause disease.